Do amazing with Total Wireless. Get an unlimited talk, text, and data plan for $25 per month, one gig at high speed, then 2G. Total Wireless, do amazing. A month equals 30 days. Terms and conditions at TotalWireless.com. Well, what is this? Welcome to the Lady Gang. That's amazing. Say that again. The Lady Gang. Things are about to change around here. Each week, we catch up with Hollywood's hottest girl posse, Kelty Knight, Becca Tobin, and Jack Vanek. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Lady Gang. I am Becca Tobin here with Jack Vanek and Kelty Knight. Hello. Happy hello. Crime Day, everybody. <laughs> Happy Crime Day. Kelsey's favorite day. She knows so much about it. She really does. I do know nothing about crime. (laughs) I'm not into crime. I wasn't a crime stopper. I wasn't in the Crime Solutions Club. I was in the Pollution Solutions Club. You know what I mean? You know, it's... So we can just do what I want here on The Lady Gang. You know what I mean? Sometimes we have to do what my other great partners want to do, and we follow in their passions. It can't just be Bujo's and home renovations. This is not the (laughs) Bujo podcast. Thank God. Thank God. Thank Mm. God, Kelty. Well, on that note, it's time for... Good week. Yes, it is. Bad week. Oh, no. I would like to go first. Okay. Kick it off. This is a little old by now, but I think it needs to be said and discussed because I'm sure our listeners were waiting for this oh, and wondering, it be? where is it, Becca? I know you're the one to bring this to the table. So my bad week is I'm on Instagram and I'm scrolling and scrolling and I see that Kelty is preparing <laughs> to go on a trip. Have no fear. She flew private and within 24 hours, there were six stories about buying private <laughs> and one post, one static post. So six photos or videos of her on a private plane or getting on the private plane or being driven to the runway of the private plane. And then oh, yeah. one photo photo in her feed of her on said private plane. So, and, then, and then once she gets there, I don't even know why she was there because she barely posts about getting <laughs> being where she was. She barely. only posts about the transportation aspect of it. She, she posted one meal and 17 <laughs> private jet <laughs> photos. And I was cringing (laughs) are you not scared of a private plane i'm very terrified of small planes um no because this private i mean (laughs) since you asked this private jet was so big it's actually a regional jet so it's like as if you went on delta regional and from atlanta to charlotte apparently this is me as a nobody who knows nothing about private planes but what i've heard is they from my parents who do um you know a lot of uh, cases where people die on them. Yeah. Apparently, you always want two pilots. Yeah, we had two pilots. You and always two had engines. To have... No, two. there's planes that people can fly private with, with one, one pilot. What? Yes. That's so weird. Um, then well, what happens if that guy has a heart attack? Exactly. You die. You literally die. That's why you need two <laughs> pilots. Just yeah. because it's private doesn't mean that there's. Oh. Yeah. The issue with the trip to Vegas and why I did not have a lot of content is that it was it was super fun, but kind of a bust. Like I didn't really do anything. I was going on a site visit. So I was going to check out like a place for um, like maybe hosting a thing. Um, that's very vague, but anyway, that's what it is, like a party. Um, and so I went and then like basically, dr- and then I got really drunk So I couldn't really post because I couldn't see straight. I drank like six margaritas, which as you know, like I, I told you guys when I come out of COVID, like I'm going to rage in the way that I've never raged before. So I was like really drunk. And then I just went to sleep and then I woke up the next morning and there was nothing exciting happened. We just got back on the plane. So really the (laughs) plane was the highlight of the trip. (laughs) Whose plane was this? It was my friend, um, my friend's plane. Um, and her husband's like a business guy and they have like a corporate plane that they fly around in. And, um, she just said, Hey, we, uh, they're opening the new Virgin. I'll just tell you, they're opening the new Virgin hotel in Las Vegas. It was the old hard rocks. They redid it. Richard Branson style. He's working as like a chairman or something at that hotel. And they were going for a business meeting and they were trying to book someone for like the big opening night party. So I had connected them with Chris, for clients. And then, um, she was like, well, we're going this weekend. Why don't you just come for like knock boots in Las Vegas for a night? And I was like, 
Kelty 5.0 is like the kind of girl that does that. So I was like, sure. Um, yeah, it was great. It was pretty bumpy. Not going to lie. No, thank you. <laughs> I ate some ruffles. It was I'd great. Rather, I'd All rather right. sit in like the back seat of a Southwest yeah. No, but I know how annoying I am and I'm going to rein it in. Like there are many things on my to-do list right now, but one of my to-do list is like to be less annoying. Oh. on social media okay <laughs> because i recently was going through my photos anyway this will be a quick story i was just going through my photos and i saw the photo <laughs> of the Des Moines. Kelty, anytime kelty says this is going to be a quick story it's never, and then it's like 15 yeah. minutes later it's okay no i'm just telling you i i went back and i saw the screenshot of the demois story about the annoying podcaster and like i mm-hmm. really feel that in my heart all the time like i know they were talking about me so i am trying to be less annoying but there's really nothing exciting going on in my life and the private jet was a highlight and i had a great dress on you did look cute. Good you week? did look cute. You even posted. You said cute. You did well. That was that was before I knew where you were going and what you were about to do. So <laughs> I was rewarding bad behavior, and I mm. did not know. That's Had I known, I would have really, you mm. know, knocked you down a few notches. Anyways, yes. okay. my good week is this. So. I've been doing a little bit of like some self tapes where you put yourself mm. on tape to audition for shows and shit and never get the job. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But you do that thing and then you send them off. And I just taped for this like one project yesterday. That's so good. Like it's so good. It's a limited series. Anyways, I go on tape. It's such a good script. It's such a, it's such a fucking great story. So I put this thing on tape and I just felt like I just, what's that like? one extra step that I can take. Like, what can I do to Kelty this job? Mm -hmm. Because, Mm -hmm. you know, Kelty can always do like one thing where I have like a little too much fear or like integrity. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like self-awareness. Integrity is the word you should use. No, it's not integrity. It's not integrity. It's, um, it's humility. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, it's something that Kelty does really well and um, usually works out in her favor. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to look up the, who the casting director is for this. So I like Google the casting director. I know who she is. She does a f- ton of stuff. And I was like, well, maybe she's on Instagram. So I'll just like peek. Let me just peek at her mm-hmm. and let me just like see what she likes. And what, whatever. Maybe I'll follow her. Anyways, She's not on Instagram, obviously, because oh. psychopaths like myself Me, would be stalking right. her when she's yeah. doing a good project. However, I searched a hashtag. It was like a uh, casting director. And there is only like 10 things on Instagram where she's been tagged. And it's the same woman, <sighs> actress. Who oh, no. Is- posting her own audition tapes no, for the free world to see and and tagging every single major casting director in los angeles oh I no i love this woman and it is like truly just it was the cherry on top of my week was to Does see she somebody work? did you look did you go to our um, day imdb do you need to start doing this <laughs> let me tell you something i don't think it's helping her i mean okay. she i I, no, I'm not going to knock it. I don't think it's something that um, the right people are noticing. And right. so it's like when I'm like, please put me on Dancing with the Stars for five years, or when I'm like, please, Paul Abdul, come on the podcast. Like, yeah, that, like it's getting desperate. It's a that desperate. Is a into very, the abyss. That's a very Kelty move. Very Kelty yeah. move. It yeah. was such a Kelty move. And I'm just like, God, you sweet baby angel. I <laughs> wish in my next life I could come back as confident and like just whatever that is as you are. So. <sighs> There's, Mm-mm-mm. there's my good week. I love that. Jack? Okay. So my good week, um, is a simple one. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is going and getting a service done and then having to make small talk with the person that is doing said service. Mm-hmm. And I recently got my eyebrows, um, permed and tinted new place. It's over Your on the eyebrows west side. Permed? Eyelashes. No, my eyelashes. Sorry. My eyelashes permed and tinted. And I just like found this place on Yelp. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go there. I go, the girl like checks me in and then we get to the room and she just like already has uh, her AirPods in. She's like, well, I'm just going to be listening to the music. So if you want to put your AirPods in and like, we don't have to talk the entire time. And I'm like, this is incredible. I made, I said zero words to her other than that very beginning. And then when I paid her and it was phenomenal because when you get your eyebrows permed it takes like an hour so you're sitting there your yeah. eyelashes jack oh, you sorry can't perm an eyebrow 
Your eyelashes you perm. would perm an eyebrow, but yeah, I, if I had an eyebrow, I would perm yeah. it. They wow. take a long time because they have to put the perming solution mm-hmm. on and then you just sit there for 15 minutes. And then I've had it done before where then I have to talk to this girl I don't know for so long, but this was phenomenal. And I feel like that lots of other places should take up this practice because it was a plus. It should be like Uber where you can just book yes. the selection, book the massage and yes. then be like, no fucking talking. None. The button that you and then you should be able to do that about it. Everywhere. everywhere they Every- did that at squeeze alley webs mm-hmm. uh, massage place mm-hmm. um the woman who does dry bar mm-hmm. when you go in for your massage you can literally put that in before you even walk through the door so no one speaks to you it's incredible I love that. and then it's not I awkward that. being like can we not talk yeah oh, it's you're like i just want to be in silence today and then you seem like a dick but you're not yes. you just are a dick you know okay a lot of businesses should take this up okay uh-huh. so my bad week um a few weeks ago i got my lip filler dissolved because Mm -hmm. I'm getting, or I got some new lip filler. And I learned that even if you go to the best person in the world, it's really good to kind of dissolve everything every few years and start fresh because filler moves around in your face and it gets kind of weird. So I get the dissolver. I was fine. I go to leave. I'm like, my lips are kind of tingling. I get home and my entire lip has blown the up. I've posted this on Instagram already, but I thought I would just talk about it a little bit because This happens. And then we have to record a podcast. Yes. It was amazing. It was horrible. I couldn't really move my lip or speak at all. It was the Rachel, Rachel Rogers podcast. Didn't really talk. And I'm hiding behind my mic. So nobody can see my lips when I look like a Simpsons character. And it was a traumatizing experience because, you know, I was, they were supposed to go away, but then they blew up bigger than they've ever blown up. And you were with Jerry. What? And you're with Jerry. So Uh he brought me to the emergency room so I could get my... What did they say happened? So I had got microneedling done the day before. Oh my God, Jack. (laughs) You need to stop doing Yelp beauty things. No, it was great. It was just, I had too much done. Too much was going on in my face at the same time. I had all these miniature puncture wounds from the microneedling. And then it was just too much. And my face was like, nope. This isn't happening. I mm. was just scared it was going to go down into my throat or something. And I was mm-hmm. going to need an EpiPen because mm. it was, it was horrible, but it went down and now I'm back to normal. So you were just as bad as that really famous meme on the internet of when the girl's lip blew up and she was like in the hospital. Like it was that bad. It was oh, yeah. the worst that I've ever seen. It you was should a cr- definitely it- put that on and then tag the casting director. <laughs> <laughs> like just in case you need me as like an LA girl. <laughs> I'm available. Um, well, I'm glad you're back to normal. I'm back. Kelty, what's yours? Um, bad week is also beauty related. So uh, I recently judged the Miss Universe pageant, which was amazing. And I had put a dress on hold that I wanted to wear. It was orange. It was tight. It was like so beautiful. I picked it out for award season and then I worn it. And then I went to go. I was like, hey, can I pick up the dress? And they're like, yeah. And then I got there and they're like, oh, oops, we thought you meant a different dress. We didn't have another dress. So then I quickly like had five minutes. And so I just picked a dress off the rack and figured, oh, this will fit. The dress arrived that came with me. It was a size 14, which no one like bothered telling me, which is not my size, a beautiful size, not my size. So it was massive. And then I got this idea, like all of a sudden I was at Miss Universe and I was like, you know what? I like, I'm going to really like let them. I was like, I just sat in a chair and I was like, just do me up. You know, like that was such a mistake. And do you remember how a few months ago I had talked about when I bought like 11 clip on bangs yeah. off Amazon? Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've kept the bangs and I had brought all of, I brought my little hair bag with me that has like all my fake hair and some bangs made it the cut of the move. So I arrived in Miami and I'm like, I have this big floral dress. And I was like, you know what this dress needs? Bangs. bangs. And I was like, if anyone can put a fake bang in, it's these guys that are like, you know, do the most beautiful girls in the world. So I did the bang. I have never looked worse in my <laughs> life. And it was like a combination of didn't tell them I didn't like an eye, a black eye makeup, a bang, a big, like, I looked kind of like I had like a nineties mom haircut, the big floral caftan in a size 14 that like did not fit and kept falling off. And then just by the way, we got the numbers and 500 million people watched it. Whoa. 
Wow. I did, Kelsey, I did see your like reintroduction to yourself on Instagram after the the whole thing to introduce yourself to all I your new followers. I got so many fans, so many death threats. I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> it's, I know pageants are not a big deal in the US anymore, but around the world, this is like the Oscars. I mean, it's insane. People were writing me and they're like, I love you so much, but I'll hate you if you don't vote for blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not going to say which fan this is where the meanest. Wow. But anyway. Um, so I use the bangs. The bangs are in the garbage. There'll never be another bang. Thank God you guys didn't let me cut bangs when I wanted to cut bangs the other day. Um, and a quick good week. So as you know, the birds were born and they flew away and I've been a little empty, nesty and sad, but I have a bird update. They've stayed in the neighborhood. I was out in my backyard working away on my computer. And all of a sudden I saw the mom and the dad. And I know it's the dad because he has a red chest. And then the five babies. And they were all on my lawn picking at the dirt with their little mouths. Like the family stayed in my area because they love me. Mm. Wow. <laughs> you guys, are you serious right now? I just, I, I just... I hate like birds. birds so much. <laughs> like I hate them so much that I'm trying with all my might to understand, but I just can't. They were really cute, but only when they were like little miniature babies. I don't like but an adult ex- bird. Okay. You know what? I'm happy for you. I'm happy. And then, and then Heather Morris, who was just on our podcast, she got a nest too. Her husband wrote me and was like, by the way, and showed me the nest. They have five eggs. And then he wrote the nicest things. He goes, we're rich in birds. He's the best guy ever. I mean, that was so deep. He's so sweet. You know, because it was like, you don't have everything you want in life, but like, look at these like miracle of life. Okay. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to talk about murder. (laughs) You've got birds. Hello, 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 you sexy little Nancy Drew. We are the Lady Gang, and this is the Lady Secrets Project. We came up with this idea as a way to cleanse your soul. We want to hear your secrets anonymously, of course. You're going to feel so much freer when you just tell someone that awful thing that you did. And this week, the theme right up my alley, work life. Have you had a work wife affair? Have you stolen a burrito that wasn't yours from the refrigerator? Um, Have you called in sick when you were actually on a carnival cruise? Um, have you ever had a war with a coworker and accidentally like deleted their files but knew that you were doing it because you're a bitch? Yes! I love these stories so much. You need to cleanse your little hardworking Dolly Parton 9 to 5 ass right now. Leave us your terrible, shameful, cringy stories at theladysecrets.com or you can just leave us a voice message. Just call us and tell us the story. 1-844-SEXY-LADY. 1-844-SXY-L-A-D. Why? Here at The Lady Gang, we love our business owners. Are you looking for an easier way to onboard and manage remote employees? Are you doing it all at your company? Are you so overwhelmed? Well, that's why we love our sponsor, JustWorks. So basically, they make it easier for you to start, run, and grow a business. And I'm going to tell you how it works so it can help your business. So with JustWorks, employees can onboard themselves in minutes with simple software that makes a great first impression. You can give them access to national large group health insurance plans and handle payroll and PTO requests all on one platform. Plus it comes with JustWorks expert 24 seven support for you and your team. Very important. So your new employees can get on boarded so easily, take the guesswork out of employment and tax regulations, access national health insurance plans. Like I said, how amazing is that? Save hours on time and tracking that syncs with payroll plus access to 24 seven support. It's so important to have a smooth sailing, manage your remote team and run your business with confidence. Find out how JustWorks can help your business by going to justworks.com. That's just JustWorks.com for more info. There's a reason that Omnilux LED light therapy is all the rage. Why the Omnilux contour LED face mask sold out in two days. What? And it's because I told you to get it. Just kidding. It's because Bella Hadid uses this mask as part of her skincare routine and swears by it. Save hundreds of dollars in valuable time on dermatology and medi spa appointments and treat your skin at home in just 10 minutes. You can watch Netflix. You can read your favorite book. You can cook dinner. It goes anywhere. You just put the little thing in your pocket and you're like on the go. Omnilux is the world's first home use FDA 
cleared flexible LED anti-aging mask that is based on the original Omnilux Gold Standard Medical LED phototherapy device used by dermatologists worldwide. And we have a deal for you. Use code LADYGANG50 to enjoy $50 off your first purchase today. That is code LADYGANG50 to go enjoy $50 off your Omnilux mask. They also have a neck one. It's incredible. Enjoy. I can't believe I'm saying this, but uh, Vogue is sponsoring the Lady Gang today, and I've never been more excited about anything in my freaking life. So Vogue places fashion in the context of culture and the world that we live in, how we dress, live, and socialize, what we eat, listen to, and watch, who leads and inspires us. Thought-provoking, relevant, and always influential, the power of Vogue continues to define the culture of fashion. And when you subscribe to Vogue, you'll get the magazine delivered right to your door, plus a limited edition collectible tote bag. So Vogue's September 2021 issue is here, and it brings Together, the 28 global editions of Vogue under the shared theme of new beginnings and a powerful and emotive sign of unity and message for hope for Vogue's global community. So don't miss out on this year's September issue of Vogue. Start your subscription today. Go to Vogue.com slash Lady Gang to get one year of Vogue for just $12. The September issue guaranteed and a free limited edition Vogue collectible tote bag. That's V-O-G-U-E dot com slash Lady Gang for your one year subscription of Vogue for just $12 plus a free tote bag. Vogue.com slash Lady Gang. Offer value while supplies last. Do amazing with Total Wireless because when you move to Total Wireless, you can get an unlimited plan with incredible devices. Now with 5G available in 2,700 plus cities, capable device and SIM required. Get our best deal ever with an unlimited talk, text, and data plan for $25 per month per line for four lines with 100 gigs of shared high speed data, then 2G, which can save you up to $80 each month when compared to comparable four line postpaid plans from the leading carrier. All of this on the network more Americans depend on. Actual availability coverage and speed may vary. Visit TotalWireless.com slash coverage slash check for more detailed coverage info. Plus, when you move to Total Wireless, you can get the latest devices like the newest smartphones and even hotspots to keep you connected to what matters the most, all with no contract. Discover us at TotalWireless.com today. Total Wireless, do amazing. A month equals 30 days. A 30-day cycle for shared family data plans begins on the day of the first line or device is activated. Any lines or devices activated later in the first 30-day cycle will receive only the number of days remaining in that cycle. Savings claim excludes taxes, fees, auto pay discounts, and limited time pricing. Source competitor websites, April 2021. Now back to the Lady Gang. We here at the Lady Gang like to think of ourselves as queens of podcasting. Faces for radio, you know, but we have the real queen with us today. In 2017, after working and hosting a radio show with Crime Stoppers in her local area, she and her lifelong BFF Brit decided to start the podcast Crime Junkies. What happened next is that she murdered the entire podcast scene as she is slaying the charts, landing number one overall and completely burying the competition with over 500 million downloads. Please welcome to the podcast our real-life Nancy Drew, the host creator of Crime Junkie and the founder and CEO of AudioChuck, Ashley Flowers. Wow, I hit my hat on my mic. I was so excited for you. <laughs> Hi. That was high praise. Thank you. You're the you're the it. Yesterday I was like, oh, I know that the podcast is always in the top five, but let me just check where it is. It was number one. It's always number one, Kelty. So they so weird. Kelty and Becca don't do true crime really at all. I, I don't do true, violence. She doesn't do violence. I do like, dateline. Yes. yes. That's like the OG true crime, though. I get it. Yeah. It is the OG. So um, it was funny when we were like talking about having you on. I have a true crime podcast uh, with Billy Jensen. Yes. And yeah, so I'm like, we have to get Ashley on. She's like <gasps> literally the queen. <laughs> like there's nobody bigger than you. You're always number one. And all of your other shows are in the top 10. I'm like, it's f-ing insane. Thank you. Thank you. And so we at Lady Gang have launched many shows and there's a lot of pressure when you're like your thing works and then like can you make it work again for other show other show other show yeah. so what is that like for you now that you have like really expanded my bar's high no that's for sure and like anyone who who works for me will say the same thing it's we literally have a goal of anytime we launch a new show if it's true crime it has to hit number one um if we're in a new genre it has to hit number one at least in the genre and be in the top 10 overall like that that is the bar that we've kind of set and in it's not just me like everyone on the team is like they want they want it to succeed they want to make stuff not just to say that we're like oh we're number 1 like we want to make stuff that like our fans are really excited about hearing and like and i and i think that's what we've been able to tap into is like knowing what people want from us knowing the stories that are going to excite them 
And so far, so good. But you know, it, it can't last forever, right? <laughs> I mean, your bar could not be higher than it is. Number one, we're like, we're like, oh, if we can we'll just get that top 200, we'll be so happy. <laughs> ah. um, I think it's interesting, though, that, well, first of all, Yes. Be- Becca does a little crime. I have a very bad nightmare situation, so I can't like ingest really? anything too nasty or else I don't sleep. So I'm the, I'm the opposite. Like I, I would love to like dream about the case. I can't, I can't, I can't make myself dream about any of it. I like, I can be as invested in a case as possible. I can be looking at like crime scene photos and like, it does not even come into like my dreams at all. Well, here's an interesting thing too, because there are a lot of women out there that find comfort in watching true crime, listening to true crime. Like I love a dateline, like late at night, right before Mm -hmm. I go to bed. And I wonder what that is. Like, what is that where women find this comfort almost? Well, I think it's two separate things. So the, the specifically, like people tell me like they listen to me to go to sleep sometimes too. So maybe, I don't know how popular my show is or I just like put people to sleep. But um, I, I think that like, just like the monotoneness of true crime, like there's no laugh track, there's no clapping. Like, so that it's, it's just an easy track to fall asleep to. As far as why, like we're obsessed. I think that there's something like in, in us innately, like we're, we're often the victims of, of the yeah. kinds of crimes that we're talking about. And I know for me, I can't speak for everyone that listens. It's almost like, okay, I want to know everything that went wrong. I want to know like every wrong move made. And, and so like, I can like prevent it. And somehow I think like, which is never going to happen, but it's almost like, um, I think I read in a Tina, her Tina Fey's book once that it's like, you're, if you feel like you're hyper vigilant, you feel like it can't happen to you almost. And I, <laughs> I don't know if that's like part of what it is. Well, it's, and then it's also like putting order to chaos too. Yeah. You're just like trying to like put all the pieces together. So yeah. So I guess you could like prevent it happening yeah. to yourself. Yeah, exactly. You want to be like, oh, there was like a reason and like this happened and this happened and this happened. And that's just the human brain. We we want to like have those pieces, but then there's like the Israel keys of the world and you're like, oh shit, like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just going to happen. So in a male dominated podcast is male dominated. I mean, we know that's why we started lady gang and you have like crushed as a female. Is it weird? And the genre of true crime is mostly men. So what is it like for you to be like a hot sexual blonde, um, (laughs) who's like running the number one true crime podcast in the world? I think what I, what I love about the genre specifically is that it, no one sees you. I don't even really see the people I talk to every week. Um, And I also love that, like, we stayed in Indiana. I'm in Indiana right now. We founded it in Indiana. Our whole company's in Indiana. And I feel very far removed from the, like, hubs of L.A. and New York where a lot of this podcasting is coming out. So while I've, I feel like I've gotten some of, like, the negative effects of, like, being in a male-dominated industry um, and people holding me to, like, a weird different standard than they hold men to, um, I, I get a lot of that. But I think I'm without ignoring it, I think I'm able to protect myself from it a little bit where I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to keep my head down. I'm going to, but like at, while I'm at number one, I'm going to keep my head down, <laughs> do my work and let the work speak for itself. Oh, I love this. Love okay. That. Now you work with your best friend mm-hmm. and that seems like hard. It's really, it was really <laughs> hard. <laughs> and it like, we're in, we are in such a good place. Like we laugh all the time because we hear about all these other podcast hosts that are like in therapy together. <laughs> And we're like, oh my God, are we going to have to do therapy together? Um, I think that Britt and I have have really dialed it in. Not that we like didn't hit rough patches. I think figuring out how to work together was was very difficult for us um, because we have literally been best friends since the day we were born. We're born on the exact same day. Our moms are best friends. So we we also have the benefit of having worked through a lot of shit already and been friends for 30 years when we started the show. And so- Um, I think we have a leg up on the people who are like become friends and then want to start a podcast is we have this like deep rooted history where her and I have always said like our friendship is first like we would no matter how successful the show is like she her she is so important to me she is like she's my soulmate and I would never let anything come between that and I think having that between us doesn't let the other stuff get in the way again not that it's not hard and I think that early on in our relationship before when we had like our rough patches of like oh my gosh how are we gonna make this work it was a lot of us just like putting our own wants and expectations on the other person like we both were making the assumption about what the other person wanted this to be um and it wasn't, it wasn't the same thing at all. Like I was like, oh, I want this like powerhouse media company and I want to be at the top. And Britt's like, 
oh, like I want to be like a mom and, and, I, and I want this to be like a cool hobby. And, but I was like, well, surely she wants to like run this business with me. And she was like, no, like I want nothing to do with like the business side of it. And so once we like kind of let go of, oh, like I would just, I, I was making assumptions about what you wanted. And we had this like really like serious conversation about, okay, what are we trying to get out of this? What roles do we want to play? And then how does that look? Like, it was like night and day after we had that conversation. And I would say we have like the best, healthiest working relationship now that, and we, you know, fingers crossed have not had to go to couples therapy together yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've heard, I've heard so many podcast hosts having to go to yes. therapy together. I'm like, this is, we somehow have a really great relationship with the three of us, but we started off not really that close. So, right. and we became close through being business partners first. So yeah. it's interesting it's to see your perspective. Other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to the important things. The fact that Taylor Swift listens to your podcast, like <gasps> what is that like? And I know that she like does secret gifts to people. Like, has she sent you a care package? No like- secret guests. No, I didn't know that was a thing. I... Oh. I, I can't even like think about it too hard. Like I can't let myself or like I can't get work done. Literally the day that she um, put out an Instagram story about us, I sent all of my employees home and I was like, <laughs> I, I, I did. I was like, like this, we've done it. It's, it's Taylor Swift day. We're calling this a holiday. Like every, I put it on our calendar like yearly. <laughs> I, that was just wild. And so every once in a while, Brett and I will be like, you know, what's weird is like, Taylor Swift has heard our voices or if someone, if someone, I tell her all the time, like Brett, like, you know, if someone asked Taylor Swift, like who's Brett Praywatt, like she would know. And that's so weird. <laughs> How did you find out about it? Was it, it was an Instagram story? An Instagram story. Yeah. So yeah. So Ugh. she, um, you know, we had like, you know, had big dreams of like, oh my God, what if this like gets to her? We, I think we even said that at the end of the episode and I was in a meeting and my sister who works for me came running up and she's like, I know you're in a meeting, but like, this is so important. And I was like, oh gosh, something bad happened. Right. And she's like, you're in Taylor Swift's Instagram story. And I was like, everyone stop what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. And was this before or after? So she, Crime, Dun- Crime Junkie did an episode on April Fool's Day and was it after? was, yes, based on that tw- Taylor Swift song. I don't listen to Taylor Swift, so I don't know what the song was, yeah. but you fooled, it was a whole case. And then yeah. at the end of the case, she was like, just kidding. This is that Taylor Swift song, Total Fiction. And I, you fooled me. That's so genius. It. Yeah, it was we, so good. Yeah, she did like a whole like true crime song. And we got the idea like back when she first released it during the pandemic, because all of our fans were like, oh, you guys must love this song. It's it's country and it's true crime and it's everything. We're well, not country, but she used to right. be everything you guys love. And so we were like, well, what if we just like make it a story? And it's so funny how many people will um, message us. They like somehow did not listen to the last like minute. And they're like, oh my God, Taylor Swift actually like oh, did a story God. based off this case. And I was like, oh no, 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 no. That's <laughs> when it's winding yeah. down, people always turn it off and yeah. you miss the best part. Yeah. yeah. All right. Wow. Well, in honor of our Jacqueline Vanix love of crime and the fact that we have Ashley today, uh, we pulled our secret Facebook group on the top crimes that they would love you to give your opinions on. Oh. I have no opinion because I know very little about any of this, but um scott peterson did he do it ashley oh ever i literally just did on affairs this podcast and this is what she wanted to talk about the whole time um, <laughs> this is what i was going to bring up if kelty hadn't brought it up so i'm glad that i'm glad that it's been so, brought up i truly don't know i think he looks really guilty if i found out he did it i would not be surprised at all the only thing i'm willing to like put my money on is that like he did not get a fair trial and had i been in the jury, I don't think that like I would have convicted based on what I saw, but there was a lot that didn't make it to the trial. And I like, okay, I am like following like Facebook groups and stuff where there's this like Scott Peterson is innocent again, like TBD, but like I'm in the group just to see what they're posting. (laughs) You're learning (laughs) around. One of the jurors was like obsessed with him afterwards and was like sending him letters nonstop in jail about her like life and like wanted him to reply and wanted him him to like confess to her it was weird is this the same juror that redheaded juror that that strawberry shortcake or whatever i don't don't know because she like i feel like she was the one that made the case some mistral i can't remember what exactly what it was but she was crazy as well one of the jurors had like um something had happened to their kid or basically they lied on their jury submission form. And that's, that is what just got his death penalty conviction overturned. Um, But his, his whole like conviction isn't overturned, just like the penalty phase of it. Your episode on Scott Peterson was so good because it really did bring to light all, because this is one of those things. If you don't know anything about the Scott Peterson case, you're like, guilty. Yeah. Yeah, That's how I feel like cut and dry. But once you actually start 
researching the facts of the case and the lack of evidence of there physical was evidence. There was like, was not- and I don't know how, I don't, I, that's the thing I can't wrap my head around is I don't know how you murder your pregnant wife and there isn't, like they couldn't find a hair. They couldn't find a speck of blood. There's somebody using her computer while he's supposed to be at his boat. Yeah. And there's this robbery that happens yes. right across the street from their house the day that she goes missing. But then like magically that doesn't look good. So then the robbery date all of a sudden changes to the day after she goes missing. But there's press and police all up and down the street. Nobody's robbing that house when press and police are there. So there's all this stuff that I feel like that's like the stuff that gets left out. And all we talk about is the Amber Fry and, you know, he's on the phone call with her and I'm in Paris and yeah, he's a total scumbag. Douchebag. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. And so if if someone found the physical evidence, I'd be like, okay, well, yeah, sure. I buy it. That's (laughs) the thing. It's like everything points to him with the circumstantial evidence and he is such a piece of shit. Yes. But then there's no, there's no physical evidence at the end of the day, the whole, yeah. I could go on this forever. So the moral but... of the story is don't cheat on your spouse because then if they die, you're automatically guilty. <laughs> yes. And then and then don't tell your mistress that your you wife waiting. died of cancer when yes. she Weirdo. just went missing. Yeah. And it's going to be your first uh, holiday alone or whatever. Yeah. Said. But I also kind of understand how the juror, I just want to go back to the juror. I kind of understand the juror. Like, I feel like I would be that person. I mean, not that would in be a obsessed creepy way. With him? not obsessed with him, but like, I just judged the Miss Universe pageant. And now like, I can't not be obsessed with my top 10. Like I'm following them on Instagram. I'm watching everything they do. I'm like seeing their lives after. Like, can you imagine if you were on a jury for like nine months, you would be so invested in this person's life. Like, but you know, well, their and- life is. like their life is in a like solitary confinement there's I, to me there's like nothing to learn it just you should read the letters because they're just bananas she's like wow. why aren't you writing me back like what are you thinking about do you dream about them like these were my dreams it's whoa weird. yeah also okay, i'm not gets- doing that i mean i'm not <laughs> yeah. doing that i'm just like wow that's not a great dress today columbia you know but what also I mean? kelty does get prison mail oh yeah i get jail what? mail all the time ashley what do you well, mean I all the to- time <laughs> So my day job was working on Entertainment Tonight, and we are very popular in the jails. Entertainment Tonight is? Because it's CBS. It's like one of the... It's like Channel 2 across the country. Like they have six channels, and one of them happens to be Entertainment Tonight. And the rest of the time, it's like Judge Judy, right? So like here comes, I mean, not at this moment, but like I I like to say (laughs) in my heyday, a sexy young thing in a mini skirt and a heel telling you about J-Lo. So they're in love with you. They're not like writing to you to like say they're wrongfully convicted and they need your help they're like are trying no, no, to be no. they're them. like they're like and it's so weird to she get the mail because it's been open and then it's in another because ma- they check it as it yeah. goes out and it's always on the same yellow legal pad there must yeah. be like some and i don't know they're just like i love She's, you even fan <laughs> club an autograph picture <laughs> and of course i, I wonder do. if you could start a <laughs> patreon based on like commissary money <laughs> yeah you know what oh i mean God. i'm like how did you get this pen so many things about you hank <laughs> anyway okay next john benet <sighs> Mm-hmm. I, that that deep breath is like how I feel about that mm. case. I I don't know. I know everyone says it's the brother. I get that everyone says it's the brother. I not think me. I'm one. Of, not you. Okay, good. No. Like, I, th- I would say I think I'm one of the only people that I'm like. I I still am like kind of into the intruder theory. I think it's an intruder. Yes. I think Santa Santa Bill looks real guilty and. I'm, I'm like 100% for an intruder theory. And I think it's, and anytime that I've said anything about it on social media, I get so much shit and mad. that poor f-ing family, that poor yeah. family, the poor mom, poor Burke, if he didn't do it, which I don't <laughs> think that he did, but they have just, their whole entire lives have been ruined from the whole yeah. thing. Like the one thing I, I, like I get why people can't get over it. Like, at least for me, like the whole letter and it being like consistent with Patty's handwriting, like it's, Ish. There are bizarre elements, yeah. But I, I'm not. I'm not ready to jump in on like the brother bandwagon. The way I think the rest of the world is like, oh, I don't even need to think about it because I, I like I know it's solved. It's done. And unfortunately, I think that like I don't think that anything new will ever happen just because this no. case has gotten so wonky and messed up, and people have believed whatever they want to believe for so long that nobody's even open to anything else. It's the same. It's I feel like it's the same thing with the Scott Peterson thing. It's like yeah. very easy to look at the case and not really know much about it and be like, Burke did it. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, oh. Yeah. This is nice. I, 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 I never meet anyone else who's like, no, not brother. No, <laughs> there has I'm to like, be... I'll die on that hill. 
there has to be though a lot of case a lot of cases where siblings have accidentally killed the other sibling right well that totally. was the whole premise is he accidentally right. killed her well, cuz that's the- why it was so believable to me because it's like i feel like when i watch kids play with their siblings they're like always like one thing away from just killing the other just one <laughs> bad <laughs> move or like one bad swing one also, bad I swing like Kids one are bad to kill wiffle themselves. bat or themselves. From murdering yeah. your sister. I mean, or themselves. So I feel like if he did accidentally do it, then it all does make sense to me. But what doesn't make sense to me is, but why cover it up? Because like based, if I remember correctly, based on like the laws at the time, he wouldn't have even been held accountable as a juvenile until he was 10 and he was nine at the time. So, Mm. I mean, to be fair, if they didn't know that and they were just like freaking out in the moment and then it's, it's too far down the line, but that seems like it would have been an easy thing to like back out of and be like, he's nine years old. It was all, it was a tragic accident. We lost one kid. We don't want to lose a second. I don't know. I like nothing, nothing works for me in that story. That case is just so bizarre. The note, there's nothing weirder than the note, than the ransom note in that case for Mm -hmm. whoever wrote it, whether it was the intruder that took like an hour to write this note or was the mom after John Benet died. None of it makes sense. Like who Mm -hmm. would take that time to write something that long that makes absolutely no sense. Ashley, is there any part of you that believes that Katy Perry is John Benet (laughs) Ramsey? I love that theory. My favorite. (laughs) That's, that's like the um the whole theory that like Avril's assistant killed Avril but is living as Avril, which I also it's, like her name love. is Melissa or something yeah, like I love that. You know that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love a good um celebrity true crime conspiracy theory mm-hmm. that has no no basing whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, they both love a hairdo. Um, okay, last one that our fans really wanted to hear you speak on was the Zodiac Killers. Can you just, but I don't know that a lot about that. Do you know a lot about that, Jack? Um, not, ex- I mean, not in that we've, we've never done an episode, but it's one of those that's just pretty infamous. So, I mean, it was back in like the 60s. Um, there's been like movies and documentaries and he would go around and, and shoot couples in cars. And he for a long time would what made him so famous. I don't even think he would have been as famous as he was, except for he was writing into the press and he's the one who like did the symbols and that's where he got his name. And you know, you're never going to catch me. And so many of his letters were like written in code and they actually just like cracked one of the codes like last year. Right. I think so. Yeah. And it was like a, like a teacher or someone so random, like the FBI, like has had like people working on this for years and years, these specialists. And it's like some dude in his basement is like, got it. <laughs> That's why you need Reddit. Cause they're always yeah. going to figure it out on Reddit yeah. before yeah. any sort of law enforcement does. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, I really feel like we could take all, well, this is essentially what the, uh, this is essentially where the obsession with true crime comes, right? It's like the Nancy Drews of the world, the Ashley flowers of the world who've been obsessed with this since they were like reading the book that they're like oh i mean yeah you might be in the fbi and have like been catching but people forever but you know yeah. who else can figure this out me <laughs> like i love that i have a question have you heard from any listeners since starting the podcast that something you talked about on the podcast like saved them from an attack Ooh, or are there things that doing the podcast you've learned are big no-nos that you would have never known otherwise. I don't know that like that you would have never known otherwise. Um, but we get emails every single week. So much so that in our Facebook group, we actually started a thread. It's called Be Weird Wednesday, where people tell these stories of like, now after having listened to the show, you know, we have the saying like, be weird, be rude, stay alive. And it, it kind of came organically. And we were talking about this one a situation where this woman's like felt like she was being followed and she was being followed but she's like I just like I didn't want to make a scene I didn't want him to like know I knew and I'm like mm-hmm. why like let him know you know make a freaking scene like it's that or your life and that's kind of become a thing and we get I mean flooded with with emails from people saying like because of that like I am so much more aware of my surroundings and when I am I'm not afraid to like ask someone why they're following me and if they're not like they think I'm a weirdo and whatever Mm -hmm. Um, but I I just I I'm not afraid of being rude and I think that's like another a woman thing like we don't people think we're mean or rude or whatever Um, but we've gotten I mean so many cool stuff have come out of the podcast like I never started Crime Junkie to think we were going to be the one to solve it Um, but we just got the coolest email from a listener last week who was like, I was a diehard fan, but I had to stop listening in December because I became a story myself. My sister went missing and oh, no. nobody was doing anything. And so she's like, I literally had to drop my whole life and everything that I've heard from your show, every tip, every lesson, like 
I had to put to work to like figure out what happened to her. And she did like, she helped find this killer who not only like killed her sister, she ended up finding her sister's remains and like found out that the guy that did it had like murdered multiple women. I mean, it was the, we're going to, we're going to do a story on it with her just to highlight like her work or whatever. But like, that's what's cool. Like, you know, we're not solving cases, but I think we're empowering people to be more aware of the surrounding, make sure that they don't become a victim, but also who knew giving them the tools to solve their family's cases. It reminds me, there was this forensic files episode of this woman and her, her husband was murdered and it was the same kind of thing. She was like, I was a forensic files fan. So I just took everything that I've learned on forensic files and put it into use. And she ended up solving the murder too. It's crazy because you don't think that you'd be able to do it until it comes time where it's like, nobody else is helping you out. I know. And I always tell myself that if, if anything ever happened, like the one thing that like my takeaway has been is, and, you know, it'll probably all fly out the window when I'm freaking out. But like, I want to like record everything and write everything down because the one thing that always happens is everyone's story changes. Memory gets so shifty, especially around oh, trauma. Yeah. So it's like the second someone's like missing, I'm like, okay, record everything. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> before we get to ask the lady gang, I have one question for you, Ashley. If I need to at some time... <laughs> murder my husband <laughs> what do you think is the best way i mean not talk about it on a podcast yes yeah. <laughs> yep I error think number one we error number one is talking about it evidence. so now this is on record so even if something happens to him and it's very clear like you're going down not ask on a podcast <laughs> and i think the key is you have to make sure the body's just not found like yes. no body cases are very hard <laughs> mm. It's going to be hard because her husband is very tall and she is very He's, small. It's a lot of remains. <laughs> My husband's 6'6". Six, six, I'm 5'2". It's ridiculous. Oh, <gasps> you're even shorter. I'm 5'6", and he's 6'6", six, six, and I'm yeah. like, I can't imagine. You're up to the belly button. Yeah. Okay, when we come yeah. back, Ashley's going to fix your life. <laughs> okay, so if you suffer from migraines, you know how debilitating they can be. They can literally ruin your day, your week, your month, and no two migraines are alike. And the doctors at Cove know this too, and they only treat migraines. So Cove, the leading online migraine clinic, specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of migraine, all from the comfort of your own home. And with only one specialist per 80,000 migraine sufferers in the U.S., Cove makes quality care accessible and affordable. So go to withcove.com and complete an online consultation designed by leading neurologists, and it's as thorough as an in-person doctor visit. Then a licensed doctor will review your migraine history and recommend a treatment plan customized specifically to your needs. So go to withcove.com slash lady gang for 50% off your first month of medication and free two day shipping. That's 50% off your first month of medication and free two day shipping at withcove.com slash lady gang. That's W I T H C O V E.com slash lady gang. One more time withcove.com slash lady gang. So Chinette is one of our new sponsors. They are the go-to brand for cookouts, holidays, birthdays, game nights, baby showers, and so much more. They believe not only everyone should have a place around the table, but everyone should be welcomed with open arms and a full cup. We love that here at the Lady Gang. You know that. So we love our Chinette. We recently did a little Chinette party, outdoor party at Kelty's house. It was so amazing. Visit mychinette.com to find out more. We love them. They have the Chinette Classic, which is durable, no bends, leaks, microwave safe, made with at least 80% recycled materials made here in the U.S. China crystal elegant look that guests aren't afraid to touch. No shatter, unique swirl design that's uber pretty and made in the USA with the exception of the cutlery and wine glasses. The China comfort built in sleeve that keeps drinks hot and hands happy. Slide on lid made in the U.S. again so they can handle anything from the messiest ribs to the most generous slices of cake. Environmentally conscious, easy cleanup. We love it. It's perfect for all of life's gatherings. So visit mychinette.com to find out more. Today's Lady Gang is brought to you by Helium 10. Imagine the freedom of being your own boss and running a business that best suits your lifestyle and schedule. (laughs) What we're doing. Helium 10 wants to tell you how to embark on a smart career where you call the shots. The best way to work from home and to be your own boss is by becoming an Amazon seller. Amazon isn't just an online superstore. It's actually a marketplace that connects Amazon buyers and Amazon sellers. Anyone can become a seller thanks to Fulfillment by Amazon or FBA and with Helium 10 software. With FBA, Amazon handles the complicated and expensive parts of running a business, like receiving inventory, warehouse storage, shipping, and even customer returns. And over half the products sold on Amazon are by everyday normal folks just like you and me. 
Work from where you want and wherever you want. Take advantage of this incredible offer by Helium 10. Get 50% off your first month of Helium 10 Platinum when you go to helium10.com slash lady. That's helium, H-E-L-I-U-M, one, zero, dot com slash lady. Don't wait to get 50% off your first month. Go to helium10.com slash lady. Okay, ladies, can't remember the last time that you wanted sex? Oh, I'm sorry. You've got kids in the car? I know. We're going to call it ice cream. Listen, ice cream, you scream, but maybe not for sex. I mean ice cream, sorry. So if your desire for ice cream feels, well, a little rocky road, you're not alone. Millions of women have felt their libido melting away because of a medical condition known as hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or HSDD. But unlike brain freeze, HSDD can be treated. Maybe it's time to change the flavor of the day from not in the mood to libido renewed. So whether you're into plain vanilla or the queen of whipped cream down to cone, or deciding between between Big or Little Spoon, it's time to scream for ice cream again. Visit ScreamForIceCreamAgain.com to learn more. That's ScreamForIceCreamAgain.com. So we are all just trying to find one thing in life, aren't we, ladies? Yep, it's the perfect wave in our hair. And that's why we love our sponsor, Conair, because they have created something epic, truly epic, the thing we've all been attempting this entire freaking year, the Conair Double Ceramic Triple Barrel Waver. That's right. It makes it easy to get effortless deep waves. The triple barrel ensures continuous uniform waves, while double ceramic technology delivers even heat for fast styling and long lasting results. I'm telling you, it really does create the perfect wave and it's so freaking easy. Instant heat for quicker styling with less waiting. 30 heat settings for every single hair type. Turbo heat for those difficult to style spots. Auto off ensures safety. One of my favorite things in the whole world because I don't have to keep wondering if I unplug the heated tool in my bathroom. Single voltage. So order your double ceramic triple barrel waiver. Go to conair.com and search waiver. Hey lady! Funky. Ask the Lady Gang. Okay, and we're back. So for this part of our podcast, it's called Ask the Lady Gang. We have our listeners writing questions, and we try to fix their lives. It's usually not that great, but we try to give the best advice that we can. Are you ready? Yes. All right. So first, okay, this is this is my favorite one. First question comes from Worried Friend. She says, my friend has dated this guy for almost a decade, and I've always felt uneasy around him. Even though he interacts with you, he just seems empty. His behavior mimics a sociopath. About nine years into our, their relationship, he cheated on her with zero remorse or desire to better himself. And then a year later, he proposed to her. Not only that, she'll mention glaring red flags and just laugh or make excuses for him because she's naive. She tries too hard to see the good in everyone and is just completely blind to his inner potential murderer. My other friends have all agreed that if something bad happens to my friend, we believe that he did it. My question is, do I express my disapproval for my, to my friend or just let her be? Why would you just let, let her, her die? Yeah. I don't like to me. That's not even a question. I can't imagine not saying something. Yeah. I mean, how, how would you, I'm sure in ever all the cases that you do, sociopaths are very textbook in the way that they mm -hmm. act and the way that they react to things and the relationships that they have very easy to point out. How do you, like, how would you think that she should approach her friend about something like that? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, one of the things is just to have a conversation. Like, I would hope that they're close enough that she would know it's coming from a place of love and not of, like, judgment or I don't want you to be happy. It's like, listen, if sometimes when you're so close to it, you can't see it. Mm -hmm. I love you. I want to make sure, okay, here are the things that I've seen. And, like, if, if she tells you that she's seen it, too, and she doesn't care you you did what you can do. You can't run her life for her, but like, wh why not just like make sure she's seen it? Cause I, I can't tell you how many times people are like so deep in it. And especially if someone is a sociopath, chances are they're like gaslighting them. They're, yeah. they're making them believe that the, that the stuff is normal when it's not. And it's almost like you need someone outside to say like the way they're treating you is not normal. The way that they're acting is not normal and you deserve better than that. And Again, making sure it comes from a place of love and not not judgment, I think, is, is going to be how you keep the friendship. Well, I was, sometimes it, it's hard because when you were dating a sociopath, Jack, he yeah. had us all fooled. We were like, he is the greatest thing of all time. Like, yeah. So the I fact that a, she's seeing the red flags is like, oh. 
Well, she's seeing them and making excuses for them, which is what I did as well. It's like when you're in it, you are being Mm -hmm. gaslit. You are being made to think that this is normal. And then they're also overcompensating all of the um, like emotional and mental abuse that they're putting on you with like this guy proposed to her right after cheating on on her. There was like a lot of push and pull and that kind of stuff where it's like you're so mindful that you can't even really figure what's going on. And for me, mm-hmm. it took me to get out of the situation to actually understand like what the hell had just happened in this like whirlwind of a relationship. Mm. Mm. That's what's like, sometimes so, you just gotta- Girls get are not gonna it. leave. Like that's the problem is mm-hmm. not girls, but most people are just not going to leave unless it's of their own volition. So they're, that's, that's hard. They yeah. Do. Yeah. Stay rude, you know? Stay rude. <laughs> I'm just always going to be rude. Okay. Next question comes from Kelly. She says, this is good too. I've been dating this guy for the last seven months. And although we have a lot of fun together, there is one thing that I'm struggling to get over his height. My last boyfriend was over six feet tall and my new guy is five, six. I'm pretty sure at five one. So it's not a matter of feeling too tall, but it's just getting used to dating a short guy. Any tips on how to let go of something that makes me feel so superficial. Mm, you don't have that problem. <laughs> no. no, but there's a, there's a, there's a, um, oh my God. I said restaurant. There's a shop, uh, by my new house and it's just for men, uh, five, six and under. And it's so cute because like on the side, it says, um, stop praying. You're not getting any taller. <laughs> oh my God. Oh. They're like, stop praying or like, stop waiting. You won't get a growth spurt. Come on in. Oh. What's the store called? <laughs> It's like Al's small guy or something. (laughs) And they're like, if you get the right pant, you can appear taller. I have a thought for this. Uh, And Ashley, I don't know, because you have a tall husband, husband, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I do feel like if you are 5'1", you should have the 5'6". You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely like, I took someone off the market who should yeah. be like a six foot woman. You took someone off the market that could yeah. have yes, dated a six did. foot woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's on me. How dare you? That's on you. <laughs> no, I like, I mean, at least in my mind, like I get it. Like there are certain physical attributes that you're drawn to and you're more attracted to. So I understand that that might not be something that like drew you to him, but it's like one of those things that like, do you love everything else about him mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. where like. I, I think it should get to a point where it, it doesn't matter. And it might take a second to realize, to readjust your expectations, but like, uh-huh. it's literally like, that's who he is. And like, you either love someone for who they are or not. And you don't want to be embarrassed by them. And it, it's, if the guy's got a good heart and he's a good man. If that's the one thing that's wrong with him and he's not an asshole and he's not cheating on you and he's not gaslighting you and yeah. a piece of shit. Like, I was going to say, you could be with the guy it. before who might kill you one day. So Literally. like mm-hmm. winning. <laughs> also, and also you your guy can fly and coach. You know what I mean? When you have a six, six, <laughs> you'll understand like yes. you can't just go on vacation wherever you want because it's too expensive. You can't be in the middle seat <laughs> on a spirit airline. Like the person does not his fit knees. in the world. Yep. His the knees, knees are everything. in the chin. But yeah. also like, that is, I don't know how you guys feel. I do not ever notice anymore Zach's height. Like I don't, there's never a day Mm -hmm. where I'm like, wow, he's so tall. It's just, Mm -hmm. they're your person. And after a while, you really don't notice what they look like at all. So annoying. Like it's, (laughs) it's so, no, it's true. It's such a like first couple, maybe couple years, not even year and a half thing Mm -hmm. where you're like excited about someone's height. But then after that, you have to like share a life with this person. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. it's also you're five one and coming from someone five three, like let's not be greedy, okay? <laughs> We're not they're necessarily still... like strutting down catwalks either, babe. No, and there's still a five inch difference. That's a that's <laughs> as big of a difference in, as I have with Jerry. Yeah, you can still it's wear big. a heel. Yeah, you yeah. can wear a stiletto and be fine. Okay. Last question comes from happy-ish wife. She says, My husband and I have been together for about four years. He's perfect in all the ways, but he doesn't like my mom. I'm not one of those. My mom is my best friend gals, but my mom is mm-hmm. being awesome. Huh. He never brought it up until a year ago. And now getting him to spend any amount of time with her is like pulling teeth. Is there a way to make this better? I'm starting to resent him and his snarky comments towards my mom. Mm. That's like real. Mm. Oof. Oof. If there's no reason. That's what I'm saying. Has, has they have, have they had this? Like, that's my first question is, have you had this conversation as somebody who like me and my husband go to couples therapy twice a week, just to keep things like on the up and up. Like twice I love a it. Week? No, no, no. 
<laughs> once every other week. <laughs> That's my bad. Two oh times my a month. God. I was like, like, going every day. Things on no, 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 the no, no. up and up twice. No. A week? Like okay, and, okay. and we and we specifically went when we no started. judgment. No judgment, Ashley. So yeah, we start we went, we started working together just because we're like, listen, this is like a new venture for us. Like we gotta keep communication. I'm also like a terrible communicator for somebody who talks for a living. Mm-hmm. Um so like my first question is like, is this something you guys have like talked out there? This doesn't come from nowhere. Like there's something there and there's like a reason. It's not for no reason, unless he does, doesn't like a lot of people for no reason. Unless he's an asshole. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Is, do you Kelsey, love therapy you... with your husband? I'm dying to get my husband to go therapy with me. I love like literally the best thing we've ever done. And it's still sexy to you. Like even when he's like, like you still want to bone yeah i still i still want to bone him like i want to have his babies one day like okay again for for me it wasn't like and i think that maybe that's that's where people have different views of therapy we didn't go because something was like very wrong and right. we're, like, we're trying to fix things i think that that would be really h- hard if you're going through something you don't want to like bone them if something's rough but like we mm-hmm. went specifically as like a preemptive thing to just say like mm-hmm. listen we've been together for nine years like let's it's it's so i feel like we're getting off the subject and i'm so sorry but oh, no, i fine. feel like for having to have two people grow up to be the same two people who want to be together is mm-hmm. al- almost impossible. I think that's why so mm-hmm. many people get divorced. I think it takes a lot of work to make sure you're growing into two people who are together. And we're just trying to put a lot of effort into making sure we can be those two people down the line. Well, and if you're working together, that's just like yeah. a whole Oof. other layer of totally. shit that can totally. happen. I've only fought with my husband like four or five times. And every single time it's been when our worlds have had to work together. It's yeah. In disaster so i <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> i really give it you the props um okay so ashley we murdered we boned we uh <laughs> talked about taylor swift i mean i feel like we covered it all, all in a great things. way um I don't really need to say this because everyone in the world is already listening. But if you want to listen to Ashley's podcast, cry, uh, follow her on Instagram at Crime Junkie Podcast. You can follow Ashley directly at Ashley Flowers. Uh, you can also follow follow Audio Chuck for all of their things. And if you want to listen to Crime Junkie, just go on the top of the charts and just <laughs> press on number one right there. And um, really easy to find. Leave a review, and we'll be down in the two hundreds, <laughs> but still keeping it alive. You know. This has been great. Thank you, guys. Um, Every Monday, new episodes of Crime Junkie. Ashley, thanks for coming. And um, stay rude, girl. Will do. You guys, too. We will see see you next next Tuesday. Tuesday. Thanks for listening. The Lady Gang is produced by Alex Ingber, Steve Delameter, and Jared Monaco. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and review our podcast. And if you love it, share it with your friends on social media. Like, oh my god, I just listened to Lady Gang. This episode's so great. Swipe up to listen. And if you really want to, which we know you do, please follow us on social. At Kelty, at Becca, at Jack Vanek, and at The Lady Gang. Sign up for our newsletter at theladygang.com and join our secret Facebook group. It's super fun. See you next Tuesday. <laughs>